Vygotsky's zone of proximal development is a concept that refers to the difference between what a learner can do without help and what they can achieve with guidance from a more knowledgeable person. Typically, this concept is visualized with concentric circles as shown on the screen now. The three zones in the diagram represent the difficulty level of the task. Let's explore each zone. First, we have the too easy zone. This zone represents tasks and activities that fall within the learner's current abilities and knowledge. These are tasks that the individual can perform independently without any assistance. While activities in this zone are comfortable for the learner, they offer little challenge and thus limited opportunity for learning or growth. Prolonged engagement in this zone may lead to boredom or lack of motivation as the tasks don't provide any new information or skills. If we zoom out to the third zone, we can call this the too hard zone. This zone encompasses tasks and challenges that are far beyond the learner's current level of understanding and ability, even with assistance. Attempts to perform tasks in this zone are likely to result in frustration and disengagement as the gap between the learner's current abilities and the task's requirements is too wide. Learning in this zone is inefficient and often counterproductive as it can negatively impact the learner's confidence and motivation. It's important for educators and learners to recognize when a task falls into this zone so they can adjust the difficulty level appropriately. There's a zone in between where a task is too hard to do alone but can be done with the help of a teacher. This is the zone of proximal development. Vygotsky argues that this zone is the sweet spot for learning. In this zone, tasks can be accomplished with some guidance and support from a more knowledgeable individual, such as a teacher, mentor, or even a peer. The zone of proximal development represents the area where the learner is ready to acquire new skills and knowledge. Learning in this zone is challenging but achievable, leading to significant growth and development. It's where the learner is pushed slightly beyond their comfort zone, facilitating effective learning and skill acquisition. OK, we understand the zones, but how can teachers use them to support learning? Here are four key takeaways. 1. Scaffolding Scaffolding involves providing structured support to help students progress through their zone of proximal development. As students gain proficiency, the support is gradually removed, encouraging independence. Effective scaffolding requires the educator to be attuned to each student's progress and to adjust the level of assistance accordingly. 2. Differentiated instruction Recognising that each student has a unique zone of proximal development, educators should strive for differentiated instruction, tailoring learning activities to meet the needs of each student. This might mean providing varying levels of challenge within the same classroom or adapting teaching methods to suit different learning styles. 3. Peer learning and collaboration. Since the zone of proximal development emphasises learning through social interaction, educators can facilitate peer learning and group activities where more knowledgeable students can help others. This collaborative learning can be highly beneficial as it allows students to learn from each other. 4. Avoiding overwhelm and frustration. While it's important to challenge students, Educators must be careful not to push them into the too hard zone where tasks are overly daunting. This requires a careful balance, ensuring that tasks are challenging but still achievable with support. This video has helped you to understand how to use the zone of proximal development, but in order to truly be effective at using the zone of proximal development in your teaching, you need to apply a student-centered approach. And to do that, you need to watch this video here.